Hello, this is Christy. In today's tutorial, I want to show you a cool effect in Camtasia to create a light sweep. Now, I know this has been done before in other tutorials and it's quite an easy thing to start with, but I always want to take it one step further and actually make the effect look more realistic and make it look more interesting and more believable if you want, because Camtasia doesn't really have organic effects. It has a few things, you know, moving some pixels around, but it's nothing close to maybe what After Effects can do. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't use your creativity and imagination to actually come up with a cool, believable effect right inside Camtasia. And also what you're going to see today and hopefully build with me is going to be reusable. It's going to be an asset that you can reuse over and over, put it in your library and it's going to allow you to replace the text, replace the effect on the fringes like the color aberration. It's going to allow you to customize a bunch of stuff using the quick properties panel that was introduced in Camtasia 2021. And if you don't want to have the patience to actually do this yourself, at the end there is a link to download this for yourself and you know, feel free to get it and use it in your projects um, on my uh, download page. So just look for that at the end. So there you go. Let's have a look how we can achieve this great light sweep effect in Camtasia. So starting is this. Let's go to annotations and I'm going to start very simple with a simple text annotation. Place it in the middle of the screen and let's make it very, very large. The font size is actually, you can only use like 256 on this, but you can actually enter here, I think up to 500 or so. So this is going to be the size. But before we continue, what I want to do is resize the container of this text to be all the way out, you know, to the size of the canvas. What that means is, this is going to prevent the text from shifting around because that's important. We're going to use a bunch of layers like this. So we need them to be in the same place always. So that means that we are stretching this container all the way to the edges of the canvas, which means if I double click and put any amount of text, it's actually going to stay within that box. The only thing you need to make sure is it doesn't go onto a second line. But you can see now because the box is the size of the canvas, Camtasia is going to actually resize the text to make it fit without clipping. So even though I put 500, you can see that it's actually now 415, 414, whatever, because that's what the text fits inside this box. So this is interesting. So let's call this one light. Okay, just a simple or maybe light sweep. No, I actually wanted just a, a short word, lights. Here we go. So this is our word. Obviously you can change it later. I'm going to actually make the text bold just so I can have more visibility here. And you know, just to make sure I can see things properly, I'm going to change it to something like a, a, a light gray, maybe even, even darker. So just to make sure again, this is something you can change later. So one thing I don't like about the classic light sweep effects is this, because the, the, the light sweep effects that you can see with Camtasia actually work like this. You've got your lights, your text, sorry, not lights. You've got your text and then you have this beam of light going from left to right. So the way that people kind of do this is using an annotation and uh, like a rectangle and adding it on top of the text, making it a line like this, like a vertical line and making sure it stretches all the way. And then you can use the visual effect called um, media mat. Or if you have Camtasia 2020, you can use the track mat, which is accessible from this eye icon down there. It applies for the whole track, but anyway. So the media mat effect is here, place it on that shape. And now look, every time I move that shape, it actually shows me the text through it. And the way that the light sweep effect works is that they animate this particular shape 
to go from left to right. So add in an animation and there you go. We move it all the way to the right. So now if I play this animation, you can see that the uh, light kind of sweep goes over. And of course, because you want to also see the text, maybe darker, you need to make a copy of that. So I'm going to insert a track down there below, make a copy of this uh, light text, control C, control V. And now my lights text is, I'm going to make that one white. So there you go. There's your light sweep effect right there. And if you play it, you can see it kind of scrolling past and so on. Now, if you want to make this effect more uh, interesting, you can actually move it faster. So it's less noticeable. Maybe add motion blur, which is something introduced in Camtasia 2021, but that's kind of it. So that's a simple effect. Well, if you, pay attention when you see a light effect like this, not the ones made in Camtasia, but in real life, you will notice that the uh, light on the edges of the object is somewhat uh, glowy. So it glows a little bit. And more than that, it, it kind of goes out of the shape, which is what we want to do here, because I don't like the fact that the, um, the light doesn't go out of the object. In fact, if I move this, you, you can see that the light sweep is perfectly aligned inside of the object, which is one thing that actually detracts from the realism of it. So what I want to do is this. We are keeping this movement, by the way, of the, the, the shape moving left to right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few copies of the text and I'm going to use three beams of light as it were, or reflections, if you want, and they will all have a different uh, size and they will all have a different intensity of the effect, which, which means that the light sweep at the edges is going to appear as if it's sort of glowing, but it's also inflated and towards the edges of it, it's going to be less obvious, less visible, less inflated, and that's going to make the effect work. So let's have a look how we can achieve that. So what we have here now is the very simple version. What I want to do is I'm going to remove the visual of media matte effect for a minute from this light uh, sweep that's going around. So I'm going to just remove that. So what I have here is just this shape moving, you know, left to right. So what I want to do is actually duplicate this and apply and make three versions of it. One of them is going to be wide. So I'm going to make this wider. So I'm going to just remove the animation for a minute. So this is my shape. Let's place it here. I'm going to make the text a different color just to help us see it. Maybe I'm going to just not change the size. I'm going to change the color of the text. doesn't matter what color it is, just to distinguish it. So what I want to do now is this is my light beam or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to make this one wider like this. Then I'm going to make a copy of this. So control C and go to the start control V. So now I have two of them. If you see them down there, there's two of them. And this is going to be like a narrower version. So if you want to see what it looks like, I'm going to make a different color. So let's make it kind of light red or like this. And if you hold down the control key and use the resize handles here, I'm going to make it more narrow like this. Finally, I'm going to make another copy of this control C control V. I'm going to make this one. I don't know. Green. The color doesn't matter right now. This one is actually going to be even more narrow. So I'm going to need control and make it more narrow like this. So what's happening here is this. All of these three beams of light, they are on top of each other and they have different colors now, but it doesn't matter. They're all going to be actually masks. They're not going to be real, um, real shapes that are visible. So what we want to do is we want to replicate this mask moving left to right, but we want to do it three times and we also want to do it using a glow. All right. So this is the next step here. Select all three of these and go to the glow effect right there in the visual effects, go to glow, apply the glow effect to all three of them. And now here's the cool thing. 
you can actually change the intensity of the glow so you can make it more intense you can also change the radius by a lot so i'm just going to make this maximum right now but not on all of them right so the top one is going to have the strongest glow effect okay so i'm going to make that maximum radius maximum intensity the second one let's reduce it to maybe i don't know half and half maybe not half we can adjust this later by the way and the third one is going to have even less than that so just a little bit of glow right there right you see it so you you see what happened here because if i make all all of these three shapes the same color so i'm going to just change their color to white D you notice that the glow effect actually is now a curve it's rounded because the the bigger one has less of the glow the second one has a bit more and the third one which is in the middle has the most glow and that's going to be important when we apply this as a mask to the text so th this is the cool thing i'm going to take this text lights which is the second copy of it so I'm, i have the one copy of the lights text is going to be the front text right the, the main text which is the one down here so let's just call this one main text okay then the second one is going to be the, the 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 copy of the text that is to do with the first with the wider shape and the wider shape is going to be a mask for that so let's call that one let's le let's make that one uh sort of uh maybe purple just so we know the the differences and this shape the bigger the bigger shape let's make that one purple too because now we know they belong together the, again the color doesn't matter we can change it later and the color doesn't matter but just for us to understand the second one let's make this one green the shake the second shape is green so then we need a copy of the text for that one too right so copy this purple text let's insert uh let's paste it right there at the beginning and move it down below the green shape and let's make this text green as well okay so just so we know it belongs to that shape so now i have two texts three uh, two text and three shapes so i need one more copy of the text copy the lights text again and if you can't see this one i'm just going to zoom out a little bit there just to make sure you see all the tracks that i have so now this shape is white i'm going to make it yellow just so we know which one it is so it's a kind of like a yellow color and the text move it below the shape and make it also yellow right there okay so if you lost me here let me show you if i lost you <laughs> um we are going to create three copies of this text with three shapes sweeping across but each one of the shapes is going to be a mask for the text underneath so let me apply those so shape one yellow i'm going to go to visual effects and apply the media mat to it there then this one actually what it does you can now see the yellow shape if I move it around you can see the yellow text through it because that's the only track it applies to just the, the track immediately so this is how the media mat effect works when you apply media mat to an object the media mat will take the shape of that object and apply to the object below immediately below so immediately below the yellow shape which is the most narrow is my lights text immediately below this green one is the green text okay so i'm going to add the media mat to the green shape also finally i'm going to add the media mat to the purple shape right media mat there so now you can see my effect right there it has actually just closed all those texts inside of them and now if i select all three of them i can actually move them around you see and they're all revealing the text underneath for each one of them so now here comes the next part the next part is this i have applied the glow effect to the tech the the shapes and also what i want to do is i want to make the effect more believable by applying it uh to the whole ensemble what this means is this i'm going to go to the yellow shape and you can see i have the glow effect here i'm going to turn that off 
And I'm going to select the yellow shape and the text, both of them, select both of them, and control G to group them. So I have grouped my yellow shape and my yellow text. Okay, if I go inside of this group, the effect still works. If I move my yellow shape around, I see my yellow text. Okay, but check this out. Now I have my yellow text and shape in here in a group. I'm going to actually apply the glow to this group instead, right? You Do you see the effect right there? The glow is actually coming out of it because it includes that mask but it creates a glow around it. So the mask, what it did, it cut the text and I'm only seeing the text through those two, two, through that shape. But if I apply the glow to the group, it applies to the rim, to the shape all around. So there you go. This is my shape. And if I move my yellow shape now, go inside the group, you can see that glow is actually traveling with my, with my group, with my, my shape and my object inside. So this is one cool trick. Now, let me back up for a second because before I do the glow stuff, what I want to do is ungroup. I lost my glow now because I have ungrouped. The group is gone. What I want to do is I want to create the animation first. Okay. So the animation going left to right or right to left, as you wish, is going to apply to all three of these shapes. So I'm going to actually remove the glow from all the shapes for now because it's not useful for me now. Okay. So the shapes are losing their glow, all of them. I, they're keeping the media mat because I need them to still show me the text through it, right? No more glow for now. So what I want to do now is ensure that the animation is working because that's the main purpose of this, to, to have the, the light moving. So what I want to do is my animation is, let's suppose I'm going to move that across maybe three or four seconds. Doesn't have to be too long. Possibly three or four seconds is too long. So I'm going to move my playhead somewhere, select all the shapes, just the shapes, not the text. The text needs to stay there and add a custom animation to all three at once. So you can do that by going to animations, animations, use this custom animation, and drag it onto the clip. The other way you can do it is using a shortcut key, Shift and A. Shift and A added three animations to the three shapes. Now nothing's happening because I'm not, I haven't moved them. So what I want to do is leave these selected and I have all the shapes selected and use the arrow keys, Shift and right arrow key is going to move them all the way to the right. And what I want them to do is just get out of the canvas because I don't want to see the ray of light or the, the light sweep always. I want to see it passing forward and just going, going away, right? So I'm just going to move this all the way outside of my canvas right there. Now, for the beginning part, they are supposed to start on the left. So I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning of this animation. You see them coming back and now shift key and left. So I'm going to move them all the way to the left. I'm using the shift key, by the way, with the arrow keys to make it move faster. If you just use the arrow keys, it does move, as you can see, but it's very, very slow. So, you know, I'm using the shift key to just move them fast. So now this is my animation. Check this out. I'm playing. It's kind of going. Maybe it's a little fast. Let's make it longer. So I'm going to select all three animations, click on them and hold down the shift key. And let's make it a bit slower, right? extend the animation makes it move slower. Let's play now. Okay, that's my light sweep. Okay, so it kind of speeds up because it has the easing in the animation, by the way. If you don't know what easing is, don't worry about it. Right click on animation, enable easing, and you can switch it from these options. So by default, Camtasia uses exponential in and out, which means it speeds up and slows down at the end. So it makes it look a bit more human, I guess. I don't know. So there you go. That's my animation right there. Easy. Now, the next step, let's get to the to the good part, some people would say. So now what I want to do is group these things back because I want to start applying my glow effect, right? So select this, both the shape and the light text be below it, right? So select both of them. This is the yellow version of it. So let's just see it right there. I'm selecting the yellow shape 
and the yellow text. They're, they're both underneath each other, so Control G to group. So let's rename this group and call it Narrow Yellow. Okay, just to make sure we know what we're looking at when we start grouping stuff. Now the second one, select the green one, which is the wider, the sort of a medium shape, medium width shape, and the green text below it. Control G to group it and right click on this, rename, and let's call it um, medium green. Again, the color doesn't matter. We will be changing that anyway. Finally, the purple one down there, select both of them, the shape and the text, control G. And let's call this one, right click on it, rename group. Uh, let's call it uh, wide uh, purple. Okay, just just to keep things organized. Save your project, by the way. Sometimes things crash. So now, look, my animation is still working fine inside of these groups. But okay, what I showed you before was that I wanted the light rays to glow. All right, so that's one thing. Uh, so I'm going to apply the visual effect glow to all three, right? So I'm just going to apply to the narrow one a glow then the medium one, a glow, and then finally the wide purple, apply glow to that too. It looks like the green one, I missed it. What, what happened there? We can change the intensity, by the way. So I'm just going to remove that one and just to make sure it's added, glow. Right. There's something maybe funny happening with these colors all on top of each other, so that's why it maybe looks funny. But now, um, Another thing we want to do, so this is the glow part, right? So it, it still works. Again, forget about the colors for now. The effect is working fine, right? So there you go. It's actually making things glow. Now, if I change all three of them to white, they will kind of merge into each other. And just to show you, uh, I'm going to select all three of them. So by the way, when you click on a group with quick properties in Camtasia, there's your color right there. So this one is yellow because it, it Camtasia exposes now some of the properties of the objects inside the group in this quick properties panel right there. You can access that one by going from the clip properties, which is our group, go to this one here, which is quick properties. So now I've got the yellow one selected. I want to select that one, make it white all the way. There you go, white. Okay, so if it doesn't do the trick, you may want to change your text also. Let's change the text also because actually what I want is change the text color. That's what I see there. That yellow is not the color of the shape. It is the color of the text, yeah? Which I see through the shape, right? So now look, the text is white the glow has changed as well. So click on the second one, the green one. And of course, I can't, I don't care about the color of the, the shape because nothing happens here. If I change that one, what I want to change is the text color right there, make it white also. And finally, the purple one, uh, I'm going to make that white also just to make sure it's there. So then the text is white as well. So now you can see the kind of glowy thing. But what I don't like is now that, you know, if I look on a white kind of surface, it is a bit kind of towards the edges, but I want to tweak my uh, intensities a bit more. So I go to the top one, which is the most narrow one, and I want to make that one maximum radius, maximum intensity, right? Like we did before. So the second one, let's make it sort of medium, right? So go to the glow on the second group and kind of halfway and halfway. You can play with it until you're happy, right? So you can play, you can tweak the intensity. If you want it more, that's fine, you know, you, you just uh, do whatever you want. But then the third one, the one at the bottom, I want to have a glow on that, but not so much. So you can reduce that glow there, look, you see, and also the intensity, you can turn it down a bit. So the intensity actually changes the the sort of the strong part of the glow, not the not the feathery bit, just the intensity of the glow inside of it. So that kind of changes the color of your object too. So now look, this is nice. Do you see the effect? It's so awesome. As we are progressing through the animation, it appears as if the letters inflate. 
it's like almost like a lens effect you can see it through the lens it's inflating as the light goes through and kind of glows into your eyes or you know that's the dazzle effect kind of thing that is what we are going for this is much nicer than the classic just light sweep okay so that's cool now another one so let's just take this one step further because that's what we were never happy so how can we make this even more interesting even cooler well check this out if you apply another effect that was introduced in Camtasia 2021 which is called the motion blur this is actually going to make things much more dramatic so because the motion in the uh, the motion in my object is um, kind of slow now if I play this it's, it's kind of going okay so what we want to do is we want to apply the motion blur to the object that's moving which is our rectangle inside our, our, our shapes so if I go to the narrow one for well let's go to the wide one first and watch the edges here right go to the wide one and in fact just to demonstrate I'm gonna turn off the glow on all of them right don't don't remove it I'm turning it off this is by the way another one of the Camtasia 2021 cool things you can turn off an effect on an object without removing it just to see what it looks like without that effect okay so I'm gonna go inside of the wide one the the widest shape which you can actually see it right there because it's you know this is the one that you see so now on my shape the one that I'm animating I'm gonna add the motion blur effect and look at the borders of the object as I apply this you see the uh, borders of the object are now blurry yeah they are blurry you you no longer see a very straight line right there okay so that's cool now let's apply that to all all three of them go to the medium motion blur to this and if you really want to make it really kind of crazy intensive you can change the motion blur intensity which is by default 100 but before you do that by the way here's another cool tip you want to change that in both the start and the end points of the animation you don't want it to start with a low intensity and then end up with a stronger intensity maybe you want but if you don't you need to make sure you enable this right here property changes affect a single animation if you click on this it turns red which means whatever i change now it's going to affect both ends of my animation. This is called global animation, I think, which means now everything I change on this particular object that I have selected is going to change on both ends. So it's not gonna be a progressive anymore. So you just make sure you don't change the position. All I care about now is the motion blur intensity on this object. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up to 200. Very, very blurry, right? Turn this off again. So you notice now at the end of the animation, the motion blur is 200 intensity. At the beginning of the animation, it's also 200. That's what I did with that global animation toggle. Okay, just a little bit of thing. So go back in now and uh, the white purple, click on this. This is 100. Turn on the global animation and make the motion blur maximum. So just to make sure that we see how it looks like, you know, it's already like the edges of the objects are very blurry you can't even tell where they start so let's go to the very last one the narrow one and blur that one although honestly I don't think that's really necessary now because um, I'm gonna apply it anyway apply the blur motion blur all the way up and don't forget to turn off global animation just there okay just make sure I'm not making any unwanted changes to my animations after I've done this so now look this is already a better light sweep than most of those out there because it's blurry at the edges it's not a straight thing but now uh, let's go back and enable our glow stuff right so turn on the glow again boom and on all three groups glow is on and glow is on so obviously i'm exaggerating now but look at this this is so cool it's now blurry and glowy and it moves very nice yep here's another thing we can take any one step further another thing i want to do is because i don't want this to be a very straight line i mean my my letters in my animations are vertical right all the letters are vertical but um if i want to make this a little more interesting i want to i want to kind of change the angle of these shapes right so i'm going inside of these groups so go to the wide one first 
and click on the group on the object, you see my shape is also vertical. Well, I don't like that. So I'm going to turn on the global animation again, click on that. And I'm going to go to the clip properties down somewhere. Where is it? Click on it. And I want to rotate it along the Z axis. OK, so just uh, click this and drag. And this is not very precise, but you can kind of make it like slanted like this. OK, that would be a nice uh, maybe like 15 degrees. You can uh, e even type the value in here minus. 15 degrees because now we know we can do the same for all of them. So I'm going to go to the medium one, go to the medium one. By the way, you have all the tabs here with the groups you've opened. You can switch between them without actually going out. So the medium green again, click on the shape itself because my global animation is selected. I can now just rotate this 15 or actually minus 15. It was minus 15 for the other way. Right. Finally, the narrow one, click on it and rotate minus 15 also. So now all of the three shapes that are acting as my sort of my mask are slanted and that makes them even harder to to notice sort of that they're cutting off when they move across. See? So my light effect is kind of slanted, right? Another thing you can do is if you're not happy with this kind of glowy thing, if you say, well, the transition between the normal text and the glowing light is too abrupt. Well, all you can do is just go inside maybe the white one, go to the white one and select the shape and make sure you have the global animation turned on and you can hold down the control key and pull the sides. You see right there, pull the sides to make your shape wider. So that's going to actually pronounce, make the effect more pronounced because it is actually making that, that bottom shape wider. So then your effect is, is bigger. So look, this lens effect is actually even stronger now. See right there. And another tip, if you want the blur to be even stronger, all you need to do is shorten the animation. That's all you need to do because motion blur repeats the frames and that makes the object kind of blurry, look blurry, but it repeats the frames depending on the speed of the object. So the, the faster the object moves, obviously the blur is going to be more pronounced. So just to give you an example, if I pull this animation here from this timestamp, three sec, uh, three zero four, three seconds and four frames. If I push this one back to maybe even half, you can see now, of course, the, the object is, is moving faster, but the blur is even more pronounced. So it depends how much you want to go crazy with this, right? I'm going to undo this because I'm kind of happy with how it works now. But just to show you, you need to do that on all three of them, move them in the same place because you want them to stay in the same position. There you go. I am very happy with the way this effect has turned out, right? So now let's make this one reusable. Okay. So I'm going to go turn off this animation, by the way, custom animation, go back to the main line. I'm going to right click and remove the empty tracks. So this is my effect. I have three groups with text in them and a shape that moves across and the glow and the blur motion blur makes it all happen. So this is the effect. Now, what I want to do is this. I want to make sure I'm not, you know, look here at the end of the animation because the glow and the blur is so big, you can still see a little bit of the object. So I, what I need to do is go to the wide one because I think that's the one that stays in there. Look, you see, you can still see it. I made it wider, by the way. So you want to make sure that you move that you either move it and you move all of them across even more or just, um, you know, make it a bit narrow again, just like that. So, you know, that's going to affect your your glow effect a little bit, but it's not going to be noticeable. OK, so turn that off now. And finally, let's go to the final stage of making this actually reusable and to show you kind of what you can do with it. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to go back inside and uh, make sure we change the color of the text just so that we can recognize what it is. So the, the top one, the narrow one was yellow. So th this is the reason I'm telling you this to do this because 
we must make sure we have different colors. So that's the green one. Oops. Make sure you um, select the text, not the shape and make that one green. And finally, the white one, change the text to be purple. Why am I doing this now? Because I'm going to start building my reusable asset and I need to know which one is which, right? So I'm going to change the color of the shape as well, because I want to, I want to make sure I turn on the animation there. Or by the way, you can go outside the group and change it right here, right? So that's the, that's the yellow one. So bear with me on this because this is important. This is the green one. And this one is going to be the purple one. We don't care about the color of the shape. I'm saying this again, but just I want to make sure I see them, which ones they are. OK, the reason is this. Look, I'm going to transform this now into a reusable asset, which means I'm selecting everything. All the three groups, control G. And look, there you go. You've got now a single group with everything inside of it, right? The effect still works, although with the weird colors. Don't worry about those now. But look, now all of the properties of all of the objects inside of this group are actually exposed here as a quick property. But now you can click on this quick property editor icon there. And actually, let's right click on this. I forgot to do one thing. I forgot to select the bottom text, OK? So I'm going to ungroup it. Big mistake. Select everything, including the base text and group it now. Same thing, doesn't matter. But now look, my text is exposed in the quick properties up there, right? So now comes the final part. Let's change the properties exposed in here, right? So I'm going to click on the quick property editor and it brings up this icon. So this is why I was changing the colors so that I can identify which ones of these things are belong together, right? So now I don't care about the color of this callout because the callout is the shape I'm moving across. Even if I change the color of that, it's not going to do anything because it is just a mask. It doesn't matter what color it has. So I'm removing that from my properties. The second one, again, remove it and remove that one. And they are available here. I can add them back later if I decide to, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm left with is four text fields, right? We've got the base text, which is the gray one, right? So we can label this one base text. This is going to be like the main text that's going to be on the screen always before even and after the light sweep comes across. OK, so I'm going to call this one base text or you can call it main text, whatever. And you can also reorder these, by the way, so you can move it at the top. That's your base text. This determines the order they will appear in the panel on the side there. Right. So the second text is, look, the yellow one is the narrow one, as you know. And the third one is the uh, purple one, which is I think the purple one was the one at the bottom. So let's call this one uh, wide band text. If you make these too long, by the way, they're going to wrap funny. So let's call this one white text. That doesn't matter what it's called. The middle one, this is the medium. And finally, the narrow text, which, which you know, it refers to the narrow bands of the shape that moves across. OK, so it helps us to kind of know what it, what we do. Why am I not making these texts all a single? Because you can do that, by the way, if you use these icons, you can combine all of these text fields into one and you say, well, why don't you do that? Because then I only have to change one text and all of them change, which is great. Yes, it's true. It will do that. But I want to show you that's going to support the aberration, the color aberration we do, which makes it look like the, 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 the back of the color is a different color and the front is a different color. So it makes it look more organic, more Cool. Anyway, so let me show you like this. I'm going to leave this one alone. Click Save now. And now look, <laughs> the only things I have to change here is the text, right? So let me show you how it works. Let me change this whole thing. The only downside of having the different text is that you need to change it four times, right? So let's call this one Sweep. OK, copy this text, Sweep, Enter. Of course, for a second, it's going to look different because we are changing the text. Change it in all four of them. There you go. So 
the effect still works. Okay, the colors are stupid now, so I'm going to show the colors, change the colors right there. Make them all white, just to start with, okay? White and white, and you can open that one and make that one white. And actually, let's make the main text white too, just so you can see. All oh, everything is white. Okay, there you go. So there you go, that's your effect. You see the glow is coming across looks fantastic now for the color aberration right so the animation works perfectly fine and there you go apart from the fact that you need to change the text four times you think that's useless but look what i want to do now is go to scroll to the medium no to the wide which is the the, the bottom one and let's make that one purple sort of purple there you have it right and another thing you can do, if you don't like both ends to be purple purple because it's white, you can actually move the shape behind, you know, back so you have only purple on one end and the other one, which is the medium. Let's make that one sort of like a TikTok, <laughs> TikTok blue kind of thing. And there's your color aberration thing moving across. Now the intensity and everything, you can tweak those and I'm afraid you cannot expose the intensity of the glow or the intensity of the blur in these quick properties. Maybe Camtasia 2022 is going to do that. That would be awesome because then you can you'll be able to control even the, the blurriness of the objects and the glow parameters as you know from quick properties without having to deep, you know, dive deep into the groups. But there you go. There you go. So that now, if you if you change the color of the text, you know, maybe make that one purple. I don't know. There you go. So now your glow looks super cool. Yeah, your light sweep with colors, with inflatable text, <laughs> and you can see the white. Do you see the white ray of light? Because that's the only one I've left in white. It seems to travel inside the letters. And the other ones are kind of outside of the letters. So the effect is now complete. There you go. Final step. We want to make this reusable, I, as I said. So after you finish defining all of your quick properties down there and you're happy with those, uh, you need to add it to your library. So all you have to do is just right click on this and say, add to library you need to do it down there sorry on the timeline add to library or control shift a add to library give it a name let's call this one uh, light sweep and i'm gonna actually put it in my reusable assets library use the canvas size very important and click ok there you have it that's your light sweep right there so now i am happy to delete this one from my timeline. Let's suppose this is a new project and I want to do a light sweep effect. I'm just going to use that from the library, bring it in here and change the text. All right. So it doesn't matter if the text is um, capitals or not, the effect should work fine. So my main color, let's call it red. Let's make it red. My main color like this. And you know, you can move there you go. The glow effect still works. I don't like that uh, purple, by the way, so I'm going to change that too. The white one is fine. The light one, let's make that one like yellow, maybe. And finally, the darker one. Let's make that one. OK, I kind of like purple, I think, or maybe blue. Doesn't matter. No, purple was better. <laughs> Here we go. It looks like the letters are on fire. Incandescent, that's the word. And the animation should still work fine. So if you need to resize this, by the way, this will still work. Just one trick. If you resize this, let's say you want to make more words, put more words, just resize the whole group, place it in the middle. And if it appears that at the end, maybe here you can see, look, it appears like the group is cut off and it messes up the object, the, uh, the effect. All you need to do is right click on the group and say resize group to canvas size. There you go. Problem solved. Make sure you do that because otherwise 
Camtasia creates a group and it clips it to the canvas size or to the initial size of the group, which is why they invented this function to resize the group to make it fit. So if you are creating more of these, make sure that you crop it correctly. So here's a copy of it. I need it to be larger. Uh, you know, right click again, resize group to canvas size. It's just going to make it all fit nicely and the effects should still work fine. You see it right there. It doesn't matter. I'm just moving. I'm just moving my um, and you can customize these. And here's another cool effect that I like. If you make your text black, the main text, or you can, uh, you know, maybe, you know, let's make it black. So there you go. Now you've got a very nice light sweep reveal kind of effect where you don't see the words except for the time that the light passes over it. So this was a long tutorial. I understand that. I'm sorry for this. So if um, I hope you have learned something anyway. So if you have, feel free to subscribe and like this video. And also, if you would like to download this already made, head over to the link that you see on the screen and go and, and get it. You can download it. You can use it. You can use it in Camtasia 2021 only, I'm afraid, or possibly 2022 when it comes out because um, 2020 does not have the um, motion blur and I think the glow either. I, I can't remember. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to uh, ask any comments, uh, questions in the comments, or if you have any, any suggestions, any ideas. And if you, you know, if you want to show us how you made it, um, feel free to drop a link in there and we'll have a look and feel free to join our Facebook group where we help each other with Camtasia questions. The link is also in the link in the description. So thanks again for watching us this far and I will see you on the next one.